Hello and welcome to the Aftcast Tenerife Afternoons podcast. I'm your host, Tim Dowd. On today's episode, we have the weather from last week, the latest update from the COVID virus. Christina's back with SSDD. And today we have an interview with John Dale Beckley, who is the digital marketing guy here in Callao Salvaje. As always, we jump straight into the weather for week ending the 28th of June, 2020. Weather was pretty standard last week. It was sunshine every day. It was clear skies, a little bit of haze. The temperatures were quite high in the mid-20s and over 30 degrees in the direct sunlight. It's a typical June day. The weather didn't drop below 23 degrees in the night and we had every meal outside as normal. Don't forget your suntan lotion because the UV is pretty high at this time of year. COVID-19 update. So I'm looking at the website of the latest COVID-19 Canarias, Tipo Municipo, and the positive cases, the Casos Positivos, is 2,433 in total. Unfortunately, 162 deaths, 2,195 people have recovered. That means we have an active number of around about 76. Here on Tenerife, there's 1,503 cases in total, of which we now have only 13 left, and only one new case in the last seven days. So into the new normal. We've been in the new normal for around about a week now, and typically it's very simple rules. The rules are that you have to carry a face mask with you at all times, in case you need it. When do you need it? Well, you need it getting on a bus, entering a shop or a pharmacy, Probably you're going to need it in a public place where you cannot guarantee a 1 meter 50 distance between people you don't know. So obviously if you're with a crowd of people that you're with, then that's okay. Uh, I think up to about 20, but uh, keeping away from strangers is good. When you enter a bar or a restaurant, you do not need to wear a mask uh, to order or to drink or eat. Uh, the waiters and waitresses will be wearing masks, but you don't have to. If you're on the beach, you don't have to wear a mask, unless, of course, you're passing people within one metre fifty. Walking down the road, down the promenade, typically you're not going to be wearing your mask, going out of your apartment. You might want to wear it when you're getting in the elevator, just in case somebody else gets in with you, or, well, they're not supposed to. But uh, basically, it's very simple. Take the mask with you, stick it on where you're near strangers. There are capacities on the beach and in restaurants and bars, so that means there is a possibility that you may be asked to wait or even turned away if the capacity of the venue you want to visit is full. So don't take it as a personal slight and just remember to get there early next time. A few people have already arrived this week and uh, according to some reports, the flights are quite normal, except that you can't move. You have to wear a mask during the whole flight. There's no service on certain airlines. And also, if you need to go to the loo, you have to ring the bell for somebody to come and get you to make sure you're, uh, I don't know, make sure you find it, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, getting on the plane, obviously, you need to make sure that you do not have the virus, so you may have to be checked. Obviously, if you've been in any high-risk areas, then you need to make sure that you're not going to bring the virus over. There is a form you've also got to fill out that's uh, usually given to you by your travel agent or uh, the, the airline, maybe. And it's a form that you need to fill out and give in when you get here. Also, you need to be able to tell the authorities where you're staying and have a contact number available. Just in case somebody on your flight develops symptoms, then you can be informed. So apart from that, enjoy your holiday. If you're just walking down the promenade and you're stopping for a bite to eat or a drink, taking in the sun, sea, sand and sangria, you're very welcome. If you're coming for the pool parties and the discos, you might want to hold off. There are a lot of restaurants and bars are open, but obviously the ones that are geared to tourists are not going to open until the tourists arrive. So the more of you come, the more bars will open. But I don't think you'll find that you're going to be stood there with nowhere to go and nothing to see. 
The big attractions like Laurel Park and Siam Park have not yet decided on a date of opening. And to tell you the truth, they have to train up their staff. They have to gear up to the new normal. So it will take a while. So I'm not envisaging it in July and probably not August. I could be wrong. Now, the new weekly spot of Christina telling us about what happened last week called SSDD. So, Christina, what happened last week? SSDD. But slowly, sometimes it goes to MSDD. More shit different day. And close my eyesight is not so good anymore. But one thing I wanted to tell you, people are always surprised that I'm so happy. And the reason for that is that I sit outside and look over the sea or I look up in the sky and look at the stars. And then I know I'm not important, so nothing really bothers me. I just like to sit here and think about many things that are happening in the world, and I've got no influence. And yeah, that's it basically. Got a great life, always got good weather, it's always warm, and nobody expects anything from me. I expect something from you. I expect your undivided love. You have that anyway. Blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's our wedding anniversary today. Is it? Did I remember? Yeah, and we've been married for 29 years now. That's good, isn't it? Well, if you'd have uh, killed me instead of marrying me, you'd have been out by now. Yeah. Somewhere in Germany. No, thank you. So where have you lived? At? Where's, where's everywhere you've lived? I've been living in... I grew, grew up in Germany, in Bavaria. Born in Kassel. That's not Bavaria. That's Hessen. Then I lived in Passau. Lived in Geiselhüring. Lived in Regensburg. Then I lived in America for... Four to five years, that was great. So where, where did you go from there? Uh, back to Regensburg. No, first Munich, where we hated it. Munich is a nice town, but it's just too busy. And then back to Regensburg, just outside of Regensburg. And then we decided to move here because we... Realized we were getting old. And Tenerife is basically an old people's home for alcoholics. <laughs> and we're probably the youngest here, are we? Yeah, yeah it, that makes us feel good too. So, what are you going to do this afternoon on our wedding anniversary? We don't know yet. Maybe we go down to town somewhere. A tree, maybe. Then maybe have a beer. Or Tim has a beer. I don't. Then come home and have a fantastic moussaka that Tim made yesterday. So here's one I prepared earlier. So if you're following us on Instagram, you'll see that picture later. It's going to be good. Since it was made yesterday and it had time to wash a... <laughs> so cool. <laughs> and on that note, thank you very much for SSDD, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Today's interview is with John Dale Beckley, who I've known for a few years, and he works here in town with his own business. And that's coming up next. But first, we'd like to thank all our sponsors, including Colin, Lee, John, and Raymond. Thank you so much for your contributions. We really do appreciate it. 
And if you want to be a sponsor, go to our website, www.timothydowd.com, and press the sponsor button. You can also leave us a message there, and also you can listen to this podcast directly. If you're listening on YouTube, there are a few pictures that you may want to look at. And that's youtube.com slash LWMST. So now, with the magic of the internet, we're going to whisk you back to last Tuesday and the interview with John Dale Beckley. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tim Dowd for Living With MS in Tenerife, and today we have a treat for you. We have John Dale Beckley, who is a neighbor and friend of mine, and he is the digital marketing guy. Hi, John. Hi, Tim. So, uh, thank you very much for this interview. I know that I've been hounding you quite a while for this, and I know you're a very busy man. So, I'm glad that it happened in the end. Yeah. So, uh, what I'd like to do is ask you a couple of questions. You can answer them any way you like, and at the end, you can say hi to whoever you like. Okay. Sound like a deal? Good, good. I'm ready. So, my first question to everybody is, how did you end up in Tenerife, and what did you actually do before you got here? I was in South Africa. I was studying, so I finished school and then I was studying uh, marketing and business management. And my brother bought Pearly Grey Ocean Club in Kalasavaki, and he asked me to come over and help with that. So I came over 20 years ago, I've been here 20 years now. And I, when I came over, I stayed with him in the, in the hotel working for three years. And then afterwards I broke away to start my own digital marketing company. And uh, we did web design. Well, in the beginning we were doing web design with Flash. You know, you could have the airplane flying across the screen. Okay. And uh, and then people were saying to me, okay, well, how do we get it indexed in the search engines? And then I said, then I looked it up and uh, the search engines didn't index Flash. So that was a problem. So we then kind of went into search engine marketing and moved away from kind of design. And we focused on search engine marketing for real estate. And we kind of, we did a long period of time working with databases and search engine rankings for real estate pre-2008 crash. Okay. So that's what I was working on. And then after the crash, I went to Lanzarote for five years and I was working with uh, Sands Beach Resort as their marketing manager. And uh, I increased the direct bookings there from five to 30%. Um, it wasn't just me, but it, it, the team kind of took on the project of increasing direct bookings. And we were focusing on building the community around social media and rankings in the search engines and trying to take the business back off the OTAs, which, we, which have dominated and monopolized everything. And you succeeded? We did in that case, yeah, we did. I mean, obviously, we put live chat on the reservation pages. Um, we answered real time. We answered in the evenings to convert sales. So we did a lot of things that were in social media, but, but helped with the direct bookings, yeah. So before you actually got here, you said you were in school in South Africa. So did you have a career in South Africa or you came straight fresh faced? I went straight after school, I went to England to coach cricket. Okay. Uh, so I coached in Exeter Cathedral School. I coached Chris Martin from Coldplay. Okay. So that's the only name I can drop and I've just dropped it. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure if Chris Martin remembers me, but <laughs> so yeah, but he was a really nice little kid. Uh, he was 12 years old when I was coaching him and a uh, really nice boy. And so I spent a year there, then I went back to South Africa and studied for, um, for three and a half years. So actually coming to Tenerife was, main, well, it's mainly because the family was here. Your brother got the pearly grey. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so when you got here, did you like the place immediately or did it have to grow on you? I've, in the first five years I was here, I had to leave the island every six months because I just felt claustrophobic. And, and now, now I'm totally at, at home here. But I remember in the beginning it was difficult to get settled and to stay here because you are on a small island and you don't have that. Um, you know, in South Africa, you can drive for 24 hours uh, from one side of the country to the other. Yeah, I used to have a car like that. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> so it, it's growing on you now. Yeah. So your business at the moment, uh, has you, have you had any influence with the, the virus or the COVID? Have you had to shut down the business or has, have your customers sort of dried up or how did that affect you there? Well, I had two main clients, the, the Gulf Costa Deji and Pearly Grey. And um, on the first day of shutdown, Gulf Costa Deji canceled my contract until they reopen. And Pearly Grey called me in and said, how can we communicate with our guests extra during this period? And uh, in our first month, we got 62,000 views on our videos during COVID, which is 
um, a big success for us because wow. we're, we're only a small resort. And what we did is we did a campaign where we got all the staff to make videos at home and send it in. So it was very rough and ready, but the people loved to see the staff at home and, and the communication was, uh, and the engagement was excellent, yeah. So you, it's a an ocean club, so does that mean that you have owners there or do people sort of rent willy-nilly? Yeah, so it's a hotel with timeshare. So you've got um, holiday ownership where people have owned there for 20 years. Okay. And then you have the hotels, which you can book through Booking.com. So you have the combination. Okay. Is Booking.com the way to go or is there a, is there a, a website? Uh, on, on the website, pearlygray.com. Pearlygray.com, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if anybody wants to come and, and have a look or uh, spend a week or two weeks, yeah. you're open when? Um we haven't announced an official date. Okay, no announcement. But there's a lot of people, I think, in the hotel business now that are still not announcing, right? Yeah. I mean, that comes to my next question, really. As a sort of an insider, um, a lot of our listeners are wanting to come over and, you know, everything's opening up again today. And the first, the last thing they ask me and the first thing they ask me is when can we come? So in your mind, without giving the game away for anything, when do you think that we're going to, first of all, start accepting holidaymakers? And secondly, when's it going to get back to so called normal i think august we're going to see a lot of places start to open and function but i think october will be another another wave because we get that kind of winter uh, group coming mm -hmm. uh, but it'll be next year I, I think even into next year it'll be um we're going to see the effects of covid okay so you think there might be a second wave on the island because we've been pretty good here with the lockdowns and we've kept it to a minimum on yeah. tenerife at least yeah because we're an island and we kind of isolated yeah but I do think there's going to be a problem when all the tourists start coming back. Okay. It's going to be so, hard to identify COVID in these days. So really, we're going to need a vaccine or something to, to level this out. So let's assume now that Jet2, for instance, are going to start flying on the 15th of July, according to their website. Um, I don't know whether Siam Park or Laurel Park are going to open this summer. Uh, there's, I've not heard anything about that. Yeah, I, d I don't even know if they're allowed to open. Um, I know the golf course is only looking at October time to open. Really? Yeah. Okay. And same so with Tenerife Top Training, the, the sports training center. Mm -hmm. October, they, they're talking oh. about. So really, if anybody's coming over earlier, there's not going to be a lot of stuff open. So if you're coming for a nice jaunt along the promenade and a couple of beers in the evening, that's fine. But if you're looking to come for an adventure holiday and golfing and dancing and discos, that's probably not going to happen till later in this year or even next year. Yeah. And I think people will now uh, be trying to avoid big, big uh, distant, uh, tourist traps like um, Los Americas and Los Cristianos with the big hotels, the big buffets. Um, they might find a village like Kalasavaki more appealing with self-catering apartments like at Pearly Grey where you it's quiet, not as much people around. You can eat in the kitchen, maybe eat out once or twice at a restaurant that's safe. Mm -hmm. And I think the resorts all need to say what they're doing to, to make everything clean and safe just to reassure everyone. So I think it's going to be hard for the big hotels with the big buffets that are set up the way they've been doing it for 30 years. It's going to be hard for them to change their model. Well, I heard uh, a couple of days ago that one of the models on the buffet is going to be that the plates are actually plated up in the kitchen and you only just go and get a plate. You can't even decide what's going to be on it. So uh, one of our followers uh, commented and said her husband's so finickety that he, he probably won't find anything to eat. So I think self-catering is probably going to be the way to go. And even supporting our local restaurants is going to be good, I think, for us. Yeah, I think. I mean, I'm a little bit disappointed in looking at everyone th that they're not being more creative, like with delivery at home, like evolving with the times of what's um, like. Uh, you know, with Pearly Gray, I'm just talking to the Eco Farm in Gear de Zora. I can't remember the name now. I think a Caldera. Caldera, yeah. Uh, so we were talking about maybe delivering that people can order it online, the owners, and they can deliver it on Friday because most of the changeover days for us are Fridays. Is the, and we then put it in the rooms for them in the fridge. So they come back and they've got eco fresh vegetables. Um, so that's a starting point for them, you know. Okay. So, so yeah, what you're saying is, creativeness is is comes out of necessity. Yeah. And uh, okay, that's good. Uh, I noticed that not, there's quite a few of the restaurants in town still not yet open, and they were typically the restaurants that were catering towards the tourists. So the local bars that were catering to local people are, are, have opened, but a lot of the others not. And also down Las Americas, Fania Bay, in fact, and Los Cristianos, um, 
do you think that some of those bars and restaurants are going to stay shut? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's going to take it. They can't survive. Already now it's putting so much pressure on them because they've been three months closed. And let's say it's another three months. And then let's say it, before we get up to full work, it's going to be another three months. Then how are they going to survive all this time with that? So I think a lot of waitresses and waiters are going to be laid off. A lot of the restaurants won't open. I think a lot of like young Italians that are here are going to go back to mommy and daddy in Italy. Mm. And it will free up a lot of the rental property, which will bring the prices down. I think this will be a knock-on effect. Uh, but it's my opinion. I, a lot of people. No, I mean, as, as we always say in all these podcasts, uh, we can only talk from our hearts. Um, I have, I have a similar, a similar f vision of the future, is that maybe we're going to go for a better quality uh, offer, be uh, but obviously that's going to mean it's going to be a bit more expensive. I was slated online for saying you don't want the the poor people anymore. You know that work really hard, for, and I said it's not that I don't want poor people. It's just all I'm saying is that it's better if you come. A bigger spend per visit is better economically for us, and we can then at least pay our people a decent wage. And for sustainability, I think um, what we don't want to do is head towards a Benidorm factor where it's a concrete jungle and we're just doing mass tourism. That That's not interesting for anyone. I think we'll destroy the island like it. So I agree with you. It needs to become better quality, better quality experiences on the excursions, not the big bus going around the island, but maybe personalized Jeep safari tours with smaller groups of Jeeps mm -hmm. that are... So I think all of that, more personalized, better quality, higher price. Jumping off a mountain. Yeah. Going in a helicopter. Yeah, do, yeah, doing stuff that, that people come back and go, oh my God, what an amazing holiday, rather uh, than just selling a sunbed and a, and a room and a swimming pool. And what about multinational companies like inviting top managers over for conferences? Do you think that, that there's, an, there's a, going to be a market for that here maybe? Or is there one already that I don't know about? Well, the problem was before was the hotels were all full and they couldn't book these big conferences because, you know, they were trying to position right. the Tenerife as the center between Africa, Europe and America. That's correct. Yeah. But that couldn't happen because places like Magma were built, but then they didn't know where to house them all. So they couldn't order these big conferences because people couldn't be, you couldn't get blocks of inventory at the hotels. Okay. So if you look at normal hotels, like in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. it's set up for conferences. The, the inventory and everything is set up for these mm -hmm. big bookings. Whereas here, we're selling it for tourism and then saying, okay, well, how do we book the conferences? So how do we now get it to the stage where we can go and say, we're going to open for conferences starting November, conference season November. Um, let's go to the Abama. Yeah, let's go to, I don't well, know. Well, maybe this is an opportunity for some hotels to reinvent themselves uh -huh. and to say we're more prepared now to support conferences and doing, I think we need to relook at the model that we can't just be open the doors, tourism, walk in, and, and we have it so easy. Okay, and who's who's driving that? Who do, If I wanted to get involved, for instance, who would I talk to? Do you know? I think it's got to come from the top, from tourism. It can't come from me or you or the hotel manager. It's got to come from a strategy that's decided like, for example, digital nomads, people yeah. that are working here, but uh, working for a company in New York or London, mm -hmm. earning a lot of money, spending money in our restaurants here where they've got the capital to spend a lot of money. Right. This is an opportunity for us to really become the number one in the world for digital nomads. So we could even convert some hotels that digital nomads can come and live for six months, one year periods and have a really good quality of life. And so it's just kind of being able to reinvent ourselves. I think we need to. Okay, so if anybody's getting involved in that or wants to start something up with that, then get in touch with the the people at the tourist office in uh, in the Canary Islands and uh, and give us a call as well because we'd be interested. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, uh, okay. it's changing. Well, that was really interesting. That was very interesting. Uh, what I want to ask you now is how do you see yourself in the future? What's What are your plans that you could actually share with us? So um, 10 years ago, I started, uh, a, it was a, project, a, a hobby um, called Canary Green. Uh, about sustainability, about the bioclimatic houses in Ether. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to do was to um, write about sustainable projects. Because I thought uh, the President Melcher, who was the one that was spearheading the sustainable tourism, I thought was going to be the future. And we kind of, after that project, when plop, we didn't, we didn't follow it on. Mm -hmm. But I thought I could kind of position this canary green around sustainability. That was 10 years ago. And the EU brought out the latest study two years ago mm -hmm. saying that we need to make drastic changes. So I kind of reignited Canary Green. I set up a non-profit company. I've got a group of 10 people that are donating their time towards it. Uh, we've done several beach cleanups. We've done a campaign for Eat Less Meat. 
we've done um, uh, sustainability meetups. So we've done 12 of those now with Kim De, De Costa, where we meet at Golf Del Sur and we invite all sustainable companies to come and network with other sustainable mm -hmm. companies. So I see my future being inside sustainability, inside green. And again, I'm looking at changing and what am I doing? And, uh, okay. And if people want to get involved in that or want more information, where can they go for that? So canarygreen.org. Okay. Very simple. Yeah. And is it canarygreen.org? Canary Green. Canary Green. Dot org, yeah. Dot org, okay. Yeah. Is there anybody that you want to say hello to? Uh, my son, Vincent. Vinny boy. Okay. Then you just did. Hello, hello, Vincent. Where is he now? Uh, he's probably in the Moye in Alcala, jumping off the harbour wall there. Okay, I think I've seen him. Yeah. I think I've seen him. He's very famous there, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> John, it's been great talking to you. Thanks. So I'd like to thank you very much. And if you want to get uh, any more information, I'll just make sure that all the links are in the description. And you don't forget, you can go to our website, www.timothydowd.com, and look at the whole information there on the blog. So thank you very much. And until next time, thank you. Thanks, Tim. Bye-bye. Cheers, bye. Vamos a la playa. Well, we hoped you enjoyed that. And if you need to know anything, then please let us know. Have a look in the description or go to the website, timothydowd.com, to the blog, and I'll have all the information there in the blog post. So thank you for listening, and don't forget you can go to our website, timothydowd.com. You can also reach us on Facebook at Living with MS in Tenerife. That's at LWMST. You can reach us at YouTube at youtube.com slash LWMST. And I'm even on Instagram, but I only post a lot of food stuff there. So if you want to see Christina's smiling face and what we had for dinner last night, go to Instagram and look at Living with MS Tenerife. I did try to get all the ones the same, but unfortunately, you're going to have to delve around. I am publishing to Twitter these days, but only automatically, and you can get the same information on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, if you are on Twitter and you do message me or mention me, then please be aware that I don't look into Twitter at all, so uh, I probably will miss it. Uh, there are a few people that have been messaging me on the Facebook group, and because I've had a few people that have been abusing the system, I am asking them with an automatic message to write me an email from my website. So don't forget, you want to get in touch? Email's the way to go. Go to the website, timothydowd.com, click on contact, fill out the form, and I will answer as soon as possible. So this is Tim for Living with MS in Tenerife, and Christine, who's outside on a bike, saying thank you for listening. Until next week. Bye-bye.